Cool. All right. Excuse me. Hey, what's up, guys? There's no room here, but we're going to make it work. Where should I put this camera? Should I have it over here? Should I have it over there? You can put it down there. Yeah, I'm going to put it over there, and it'll, it'll record everyone. You're the cameraman. Uh, kind of. I actually also have notes up here that I'll kind of awkwardly work with. Uh, let me go ahead and while you're working with that, let's go ahead and get everybody on the same page for where we stand with uh, as regards to Pegasus Pilots. Okay, so uh, how often do you guys check the Discord just to know where we stand? Is it like once a week, once a month, every single day? Where do we kind of stand? A few times a day. A few times a day? Mm, probably once a week. Yeah. Once a week? Okay, okay. And that's okay. I, I know you got busy lives. It's just uh, we want to make sure we're understanding how you're reading it. Because there's no point in sending out a message every single time if no one's getting it. So we want to make sure we're working with you, not against you. Okay. Uh, to go over the last set of updates for where we've been uh, as an RSO, let's go over, as a minimum, what we re are required to have as an RSO. We need to have a minimum of 12 UCF email addresses to become official, which we're already more than 50% there with the people in this room, so no worries with that. Uh, we need to have a faculty advisor or a sponsor. That has been the biggest problem up until yesterday. So that is like the biggest hurdle. We have crossed the biggest uh, obstacle. That part is over. We are good. To give you a little bit of context for uh, what exactly uh, what entails a faculty advisor. It can be as minimum as you just sign the papers, you fulfill the legal obligations as an RSO, or it can go all the way to because of their connections. They can provide us with resources, they can give us things that any other faculty member otherwise wouldn't give us. So uh, we are very fortunate I like to think that we kind of struck the jackpot with his qualifications yeah. and his experience. It was a little too good to be true, wouldn't you? Yeah. I was like, really? When I was reading his qualifications. So uh, it was Dr. Florian Gench. He is the chair of the psychology department. So he's got his PhD in psychology, human factors, and then was it a German degree? It was, yeah. Something uh, like that? So, yeah. Um, okay. A, a German degree, meaning he went to Germany. Mm -hmm. It's like a five-year degree. It's more than our bachelor's, but less than a master's. And he got his degrees in at least aerospace engineering. He said aeronautical science. Like I said, well, in aeronautical science. <laughs> yeah, like something. That. He went to Embry Riddle and he did some mm -hmm. flying there or at the airport next to it, something like that. Long story short, he's definitely way more than we expected, uh -huh. but we're not complaining about his qualifications. Um, he no longer is medically qualified, but he was like commercial, he was a CFI, so we're definitely not concerned about him. Like, well, how does this flying thing work? Like, he's not in the dark in that regard, and then we're pretty happy with that. But we also got some other contacts, because, uh, you know, it's not just emailing one professor or faculty member and hoping that it works out. It's kind of contacting a lot of people. If you saw in the Discord earlier today, I was on a phone call with Dr. David Metcalf, and he's in a similar department. So Dr. Gensch, who is, by the way, just to make sure we're clear, Dr. Gensch is going to be on paper for the spring semester our faculty advisor. Dr. Gensch is in, in the psychology department. He works, he's been working with the FAA since the 1990s with research regarding flight training and simulation, human factors, all that for, uh, smart, fancy words, all that cool stuff. He's been in that realm. Okay, so he is kind of related to Dr. Metcalf because they both work in psychology. Uh, and Dr. Metcalf talked with me on the phone today about, at minimum, even if he can't be our sponsor, he does have an opportunity for us because they already have, apparently, at UCF, this aviation STEM outreach program where they go to, like, K-12 schools, they got flight simulators and drones, and I'm like, really? I never Let me know if you can hear us, Lawrence. News to me. So, anyways, uh, that's a research opportunity in the future uh, that we can look into. That is not an immediate thing, but that's something that uh, Dr. Metcalf said he is he's open to having a meeting with us within the next week or two so we can kind of get that going That really has my attention. What's okay. that? I don't know Lauren just sent me this look Larry, do you want to explain what the yeah, PDF do. you just sent me is? Looks like electrical work. Ooh, I, I would like okay. to explain it in detail, but it is not my work. It is a guy named Julian Yerker's work. So he's the guy that was lead for the E team when we were doing this project a year ago. Mm -hmm. I, I believe he's graduated now, but this is basically, I believe, the BMS that you're looking at. 
Okay. Which looks crazy, right? I know. Yeah. But it does look kind of crazy. It looks I wish I could explain What does this mean? And like what's the pricing years? cheat? What's the money, <laughs> all the money that goes into the things for? What, are you, what is exactly are you building there? So the uh, build materials list everything from the motors to the BMS, which is what you probably see. I don't know. I can't see the screen. I see, but that, the motor, and then everything else, I believe, wires too. And I don't believe it was complete BMS. That's the only issue. Okay, so that is, that's the other project that's happening at NG? No, no. This that this is the electrolyte project. That's, that's what you're looking at from the ease. The east side of it, I guess. Okay. What is this for? So it's for the electric um, electric power train for the plane. Oh, okay. So you already yeah. got that for it. Okay. So yeah. what do we have to do with it? Do we have to like just have it for reference? Do we need to? Let's just start building right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, start building. Yeah. No, no, no. It's it's definitely a reference point. The thing is, there's been a lot that has changed. One thing that has changed is that Julian, mm -hmm. I haven't been in contact with him like since last year in a few months, but he's the one who made this, so he's probably the best person to go to to help you understand what you're seeing here. Okay. So this okay. is basically a reference point for any EEs. Maybe there's EEs in this group. I'm not sure. Yeah, when we're going to, if we're going to want to start the project, we're definitely going to need an EE. We're going to get We're going to need a team in every single engineering team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah for sure. But Think of this as a, a starting point, just to, so you know what to base your design off of. Okay. For when you guys get an ET, that is. Okay. Okay. And the, the gentleman Julian's going to arrive later, correct? No, Matthias. Matthias is coming 520, Moses okay. is coming 530. Julian, does he even go to school anymore? Is he in UCF? I, I, I believe, I think he graduated. Okay. We'll find yes. someone that worry. I'm not sure. But. Okay, cool. We'll so, out, I, I think as far as electrics go, I'm sorry guys, but I don't understand that just yet, so <laughs> whoops, my bad, sorry. I think that's uh, a little bit far in the future, yeah. <laughs> right now we're build, like just really putting out the start point of exactly how we're even going to get started, not only the funding side of starting it, but getting enough people, knowing exactly what we're going to do, you know, starting setting some deadlines just for starting it off, Yep. and getting people interested, yep. there, and finding a, sponsors. There's, there's and so many concerns. Uh, prior to what I was talking about, I talked about uh, Dr. Metcalf, Dr. Jench, and then there's another gentleman, I think you told me about him, Dr. Uh, Timothy Ravitch. Was that you? No. It's okay, someone else told me. See, this yeah. some people keep track of. Uh, Dr. Timothy Ravitch is a aviation legal expert. He, he's an actual lawyer, uh, and lawyers aren't that common. Aviation isn't that common. When you put them together, you get a pretty rare person. So he just so happens to be here at UCF, and um, I did send him an email. He hasn't replied yet, but we're going to get in touch with him one way or another. We're going to barge through that door. FBI style and enter, and we're gonna get his permission. I, one way or another. you know, ROTC. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's you know, like aviation. It's the Air Force. Um, yes. There is a law major who is around our grade. I can see if I can recruit him. Maybe he can start working on law activities on the side. We will look into that. Thank you. I'll let you know of his name and contact as soon as I can. Okay, so I'm writing all these in. Brandon has a contact with law. Okay, you got it. All right, sweet. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and probably, there's no more questions regarding the electrical stuff, I'm pretty sure, because we can't really do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't think okay. anybody here, most people in this room are freshmen, and that that picture almost made all of us a barf. There, yeah, thank uh, you. that's okay. Hey, maybe barf too. You guys right. wanna go over what we did last meeting to give them a little insight yes, for, for whoever who was not here? Please, please give them a little bit of a Okay. I have my notes. Do you have your notes popped up? You want to maybe go over that? Uh, I don't have them right now, but I can tell you from memory. Okay, great. You emailed that to me, so you could just check it there. Sweet. So, last meeting, we talked with a guy named Moses from NGE. He, he's going to come here in like 545. He's, he has an internship, so he's going to be a little bit late. And he talked to us how he has connections with the runway. That's like, I think, 20 minutes away from here? Really? North of here, yeah. something like that, right? And we talked about how we're gonna have to start getting financial aspects like student government funding and sponsors from different companies maybe around Orlando. We were talking about how we needed to have a lot, a lot of safety measures for us to be able to be approved to do this in the school, like having a parachute or many other things that we're gonna have to look through. You know, certain the, is, do you know if there's any like companies or something that have to check the plane before? So in terms of the aircraft, uh, taking a step back to answer the question, there's two paths that we had explored at the prior meeting 
for how we would navigate the challenge of building and flying an aircraft. The two options were, number one, we'd have a kid airplane. For those who don't know, yeah. a kid airplane is like a Vans RV-12. It's, it's you know, a, a plane that comes in pieces and you put it together. So you got the wing, you got the fuselage, all these different parts, versus doing everything entirely from scratch. That's the difference between a kit aircraft and something that is uh, a, a built from scratch plane. Now, if it's being built from scratch, uh, I, I believe, per what I've looked at lightly, at the EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association, they have, I don't know if it's either you can fly it on your own after you built it, but basically to be on the safe side, we'll mm -hmm. be working alongside someone who's experienced with building planes and flying planes. Right. So it's definitely, connect, especially in Florida, a bunch of rich old people. We'll, we'll find yeah. someone. <laughs> we'll find someone. Um, so we'll have a connection with that. And um, what I will say, what, what I can say certainly is that even if the minimum FAA requirement for safety is here, we're going to make sure we're going to go as high as we can go and as high as we can afford, which is yeah. a lot of money, but as high as we can go. Uh, because, you know, there's no reason to, oh, we can go fly ourselves. Okay, yeah, we can. Is that a really good idea? So, um, generically speaking, as far as building and flying it, that's all i got to say off the top of my head. I don't want to say anything else because I haven't looked into I don't know the regulations. Right that much. We're going to do a lot of research. We're going to have a whole phase just Absolutely. for researching exactly. And, and, and it's not just the, uh, the legal stuff too, it's like the, the publicity. We know how mm -hmm. aware that the flying public is about airline transportation and other things like that. I have no idea how the hell we're going to have to tackle the yeah. whole, hey, we're building a flying plane, you know, so mm -hmm. we'll get there, of course, but that's going to be another additional challenge on top of the legal stuff. So, right, baby steps, but we're going to get there. Right, we're gonna have to uh, delegate a lot of different teams. I think first of all, we gotta see how much people, you know, across campus are really interested in this project and actually taking it into initiative. Because yes. we need a lot of people, just starting yes. off from all kinds of different aspects. Did we talk about whether or not we wanted to do combustion or electrical? We did talk about yeah. that. Um, I'm pretty sure the answer thus far, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, combustion, combustion. combustion is a little bit easier. There mm -hmm. are answers out there, there are electric motors out there. I'm not saying it's off the table. But just roughly looking at it without any further investigation, combustion machine. That's just Especially the ones that come in the kits, I'm pretty sure that's what they are, right? Yeah. Okay. We talked about how we need connections for an inspector, so we so we're able to take the aircraft off the ground, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, legally, we are, we want to find a professor that can maybe help us out, and maybe some aerospace person that sounds interested, like who would be interested in helping us out with this project, because I know the professors 100% have a lot of connections and will definitely help us cut all those little things that we're going to have to find out. Um, we talked about senior design group to help us with a part of the project, which means we don't want to only put it all through maybe a club, but maybe a senior design group can do help us with like a part of the plane, maybe, I don't know, making the engine, making whatever. We said start, this is a different thing, but AI tri AA has uh, this thing that they called test design fly project that they didn't do this year which is specifically they usually do it for AIAA, if you guys are familiar with the mm -hmm. club on campus. Mm -hmm. And because they didn't do it on campus this semester, the school actually really wanted them to do it. And they're kind of, you know, discouraged that they didn't do it this semester, so we can actually take on that project now that they didn't do it, which we're going to have to, I'm not exactly sure, do you remember what that project is? I remember this. Remember, they were going to, this, this is the last year that they needed yeah. to be able to host yeah. the actual right. event from all oh, the Oh, yeah. that thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I don't know what we're talking about now. So, so the squad thing lost like a lot of money or a lot of like... Yeah. And their whole track record off of Yeah, the track record. Yeah. Because like, once it they resets, they have to go back to the start. Yeah, yeah. Sense, which is right? like 13 years or something. Wow. Well, it's over, it's over, over 10, time, I don't know. Yeah. Well, well. So yeah, so we could start off with that. Just a little, maybe a side project, nothing to do with the aircraft. Mm -hmm. We were talking about an ultralight electric engine. I don't know if we're going to do that. Yep. FAA, the wall. right? See what happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. FAA inspections, getting a legal team of students from like the law school around yes. here. We have graduate students that they're obviously going to maybe want to come to help, so like, they can put on a resume. Like, look, you know, I helped get a plane off the ground legally. We yep. can talk to KXR about that as well. Do they have, oh, they have a legal team, team. Yeah. true. They do yeah. have a legal team. Um, we said SGA need many things for the safety of the plane, for the funding, which means we're going to have to sell them every single. Thing in the book about safety for them to be like okay we can fund this project and um, we talked about storage because that's going to be very costly yes. especially mm -hmm. for the aircraft mm -hmm. i know i think we talked in if you guys are familiar with research row which is like a five minute drive from campus i think they have some type of like aircraft um storages over there i don't know if we're going to be able to use it we're going to have to have not only connections but also find a place 
around here that we can store the aircraft and that's going to be a lot more fun and only for that we talked about the tools to build the plane because you can't just you know build it with our hands start like screwing in the screws yeah, we're gonna they're <laughs> hell expensive too they're not like yeah. Yeah. Freight. oh yeah a five dollar screwdriver set you gotta mm -hmm. get the right thing you have to build it's the plane cheap. And we're thinking we have to have maybe connections with something and maybe research row because it's around here to maybe <clears> manufacture <throat> there we need a whole place to manufacture <clears throat> the aircraft right and we did ideas for a trailer storage because someone thought maybe we can put it inside of a trailer so we can you know drive it around so it doesn't have to be in a carrier and research parkway storage i was written down there committees for just reaching out to places companies alumni or people for donations which if we're going to start off this project we need funding obviously mm -hmm. for even just starting off yes in the publicity can you tell them please real quick what the rough numbers were it was something like fifteen thousand. yes yeah. it was for like the that. to build the aircraft itself it was fifteen thousand for all the parts now that's with the margin mm -hmm. but for the manufacturing cost itself for buying all the tools we didn't add that in did we larry do you remember can you still hear us? i don't believe that was can you hear me hello yeah can you hear me test test yes okay. we can hear you no i don't believe we added all the tools from that we did start that's the thing and okay. i do have documents Okay. Do you remember how much it, how much yeah, you came out for the cost point. with it? I do not. I do not know. Oh, okay. I can look up, look it up, and then you guys can continue talking. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah cool. Thank you. I remember Moses told us last time on fifteen thousand, and then also yeah, yeah. even more costly is the storage, right? Yes. Storage is probably yeah. gonna be the most. <laughs> it's gonna be the part. most expensive part. Yeah. And we wrote down. So we're gonna have to do a lot of reaching out for not only funding but also donations. We're gonna have to have sponsors for this project. So we're going to have a whole committee just for reach out. Yes. And then what type of kit to use? Because there's a lot of different kits for people that are building planes. I don't. Were you in the high school that they built planes over there? No, I wish. No. Oh, okay. that, that was down in Lakeland, though, wasn't it? So, yeah. So I'm pretty the, sure it was in Lakeland. Do you want to maybe give a brief overview for the people who don't know what a kit is, what exactly that high school did? Sure, yeah. I mean, so that was actually, if you guys remember, my original EGS lecture presentation at the very, very end. I said, oh, yeah, we're going <clears> to <throat> fly a plane and build it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, the main elevator pitch way to say hey look if high school students can do it so can college students and, and to delve into that a little bit more um it was the lakeland high school era club and again i did not go to this high school i just read about it on the internet because it's extremely cool yeah and i also did my flight training at polk state college from instrument rating which is right next to this high school so i did not see any kid airplane i just looked over the fence with jealousy and hatred and those high school students that could do mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, so <laughs> I didn't get to see any of this stuff, but you know what they would do is they get their kid aircraft. Um, again, because of them being a, a formal institution, there's so much more structure, so much they, they have all the resources at their disposal to make this happen. But they got a kit plane. Uh, how they actually like I don't, I don't think it was like a UPS box. I, I think it, yeah, you know, <laughs> to you in, in different parts. And um, it, it's not really a matter of like their bending like a bunch of high school students bending metal with their hands or anything. <laughs> it's more like you get the parts, you put it together, and, and they would do it throughout the year. And I think what they did is like once a year they would like build a plane and it was it was something they had money for, so they could definitely do it. Um, but yeah, they would get the parts put together and it would be a side project that they would do throughout the year and they would eventually fly and it was a, it was a whole big thing. So as far as that goes, that's from word of mouth talking to uh, people at Polk State who are familiar with it because they went to the high school and just again work now looking things mm -hmm. up So as far as the kit plane thing goes with the Lakeland High School Aero Club thing that they got That's about all I gotta say no one else here has any other insider info, right? Well, I think mm -hmm. I remember from the last meeting they were saying that, that Every year they would build the plane and sell the built plane sell it. to buy the next kit and that would give them yeah, a yeah, bit right. of the money there was there some weird there. thing that happened where I think the school just took the money. just didn't get the plane or something. I think the school just took the money. Yeah, the school took the money. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing that, 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 you know, we'll be going over, uh, not right now, but in, in generics with the club, mm -hmm. is, you know, there's us wanting to do things, and I'm not saying what UCF is bad, I'm just saying, like, there's a process to mm -hmm. how things are doing. So that was a, a reminder, like, you know, we have all these wonderful ideas, including building and flying this plane, and it's like, shoving uh, a frozen block of cheese through right. ice cream. It's right. like, you got to do it the UCF way, you know? <laughs> so that, that's where a lot of these uh, regulatory things, a lot of these things come into play. Um, but yeah, as far as the blame building stuff goes, that's what I, what I remember. Right, right, totally. I, right now I searched up, it says plane kits. 
that are around in $25,000 for the kit. Let's see if you guys want to see any of the pictures for the planes that come out of the kits. Just so we can get a better understanding. Let me click on a random one like this. It looks kind of sketchy, <laughs> but it's cheap, guys. It's cheaper than a lot of cars, right? Yeah. So we can see this thing. Okay, I don't think that one's. Maybe that That's one's. That's a van. Yeah. Nice. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. So those are the pictures of the kits, and the last two things that we have. Uh, oh, last one thing is reach out to people to get the tools for building the kit, which we're thinking maybe people in the research row, or maybe in, you know in the UCF community have somehow the kind of tools for manufacturing this. If it doesn't come with a kit already. So reaching out for them, which is part of the reach out committee. Yep, most certainly. Right. And uh, earlier today and just now when you were talking about reaching out, I was definitely thinking of reaching out to the Orlando Executive Chapter mm -hmm. chapter for the EAA, the Experimental Art Capsule. Yeah. That's what they do. That's all. They have like, oh, actually, now, now that I uh, think of it, Dr. Dr. Metcalf was saying they specifically have connections with the Young Eagles program and, and things of the sort. So, you know, now that I think of it, we can either go to the Orlando Executive, okay. EAA chapter, or, and or, talk to Dr. Metcalf, yeah. figure something out mm -hmm. through that. So we definitely are getting closer, we're getting a little bit warmer to all these answers. We just don't mm -hmm. have to get there, but we're getting, we're getting there, we're getting warmer. Right. I definitely think starting off with finding a professor yes. that knows how to build planes <laughs> was a great start, not only for the connections that they have, but so they can give us, you know, a little clear way of path of exactly how this works. I want to kind of like open up to any ideas or questions you guys have. Yeah, please. Yeah. We, we don't want to just be talking mm -hmm. to unless yeah. we get, even if it's something small, we want to have these Yeah, even if it's like comments. something that popped up in your mind, yes. you're like, oh, maybe this is not going to work. Maybe this is a good idea. You're like, you know. What's our plan for outreach within the actual engineering master classes? Are we just looking for more recruitment or mm -hmm. is it? So, um, Per, okay, so to talk about the engineering lecture classes, are you saying engineering lecture like EGS or just yeah. engineering in general? EGS. Uh, EGS, EGS, okay. So for EGS Tona 7, uh, for those of you that are in the class this semester, you're going to see our faces again March 1st. We are reserved to go up again March 1st. Uh, so that'll be our second call of interest recruitment type presentation. And uh, forgive me, the question you're asking is what is our purpose is it just recruitment only is is that what you're getting at yeah okay so yeah it's of course recruitment uh but then like you said we're going to start pitching ideas like hey last time we were here we were nothing but now we're mm -hmm. something and now that we're actually getting somewhere we we actually need and and present a list for what we're mm -hmm. looking for yes, and, right. and because it's it's overall an engineering project in the grand sense you know somebody that is you know someone like a junior or a senior hopefully electrical, my see, <laughs> oh, I can do that. You know, hey, we might even have a whole slide, like, can you read this? Sign up with us. So um, there's that, yes. And then there might be someone that's like a freshman or something that, oh, oh, oh hell yeah, look at that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're in that earlier today. Calm, there's three more chairs here. Welcome, what's your name? I'm Lance. Lance Brandon. All right, cool, nice to meet you. Yeah, if we have a point system, give the guy extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> OK, okay so anyways. Um, to uh, continue to answer the question. So yeah, someone that's like a senior or a junior electrical guy is like, oh, I can read that chart, I can contribute. But someone who's a freshman or, or a sophomore who wants to contribute but can't quite do that level of contribution, might be like, oh, well, I can, I can still be a part of it. I can be on the legal outreach, whatever committee that we have. Because there's going to be so many, okay, for Pegasus Pilots overall, there's going to be a handful of different groups as right. we grow. That, and we're going to talk about our progression, but I'm going to talk about the spring semester, the semesters beyond that, what's our short term, what's our long term progression plan, but specifically regarding the idea of building a flying plane, mm -hmm. uh, we have to have lots of different teams, committees, right. people. We're going to have, a, have to have a committee of every single engineering room, like electrical, yeah. mechanical, yes. aerospace, mm -hmm. right? We're going to have to have maybe thermal engineers. I don't know if we even have that program in UCF. We're going to have every single one of them. We have to have maybe graduate students that help us out from different places and also a legal team. Yes. Right. I think we do with the EGS lecture. That's we're gonna, you gotta do basically just getting fresh. I mean, I think we do need to figure out ways <laughs> to get seniors. Right. Oh, I totally like, forgot. Like, there's no seniors. <laughs> it's all, <laughs> oh all fresh God. with it. So You're right. I forgot about we that. We need a better okay, yeah. way to to reach out to and recruit yes. like juniors, seniors. And that is on our, our meeting list. Thank you for, for mm -hmm. covering on that. For mm -hmm. recruitment stuff in general, we'll, we'll probably talk about it more later. But as far as this semester goes, it's definitely in the books to, of course, hit up AIAA yeah. and things of the sort. 
building managers so will have to contact them, put up flyers and things of the sort. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, right. there's this thing uh, for those of you who are interested in being an officer. Real quick, talking about that. There's an authorized officer, and there's a non-official, whatever it's called, officer. Basically, with UCF officially recognized, there are a minimum of two required officers. Your president, vice president, or president or treasurer, and a maximum of four, which is president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. Now, the non-official positions are ones that you can make up yourself, like social media management or a historian or, or something. Uh, so, as far as that goes, um, when I said building managers, it just came to mind. For those of you who are interested in that kind of stuff, I will put. I'm already putting together a Discord channel specifically for that. So you just got to do two. A minimum of one, but likely two of courses. So the one that all authorized officers got to do is called, it's just called the RSO Authorized Officer Web Course. You self-enroll, you click a link, and you just take a quiz. It's unlimited times, or unlimited attempts, I believe. So, it's my BS. Yes. Hey, what's going on, sir? My BS. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He looks surprised to see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And he's see me. Where do you want to see that? No, okay, there's not, there's not much room. We'll let you, we'll let you squeeze in. Okay. I would try and be careful not to stand next to the door and get hit. What was your name? Matthias. Matthias? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'll stay over here, away from the door. Okay, um, where was it? Yeah, authorized officer stuff. So right now we're talking about the process. Are you with NGE or are you with NG? NG, yeah. Okay. So yeah. we are trying to become a club. We're just talking about the process of becoming one. To so become an authorized officer, you just have to take the web course, pass it, and I'll save the boring details because I know it's not, it's not that interesting. I'll save those details for those interested. I'm just saying we are, I've already completed the one that I got to do and I'm about to complete the second version, or second version, the second other option that there is for the web courses that officers got to do. As an RSO, we need a minimum of two officers that are authorized who have completed what's called the A and SF web course, which is the activity and service fee officer program. Those things are going to like half an hour. It's not, it's yeah. not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it's kind of awkward though because the PowerPoints aren't helpful. I'd use Quizlet to answer. I just skip so everything so. So. <laughs> I just skip everything ChatGPT if you do the quiz on them. Hey, there you go. Yeah. See? Bureaucracy. Okay. So um, that's how, that's how uh, that's going to work as far as, um, as far as uh, us being on, you know, getting the officer's stuff all set up. I'm sorry I derailed it. I just wanted to, to cover these things before I, before I forgot, before I got off track. Um, but yeah, recruitment's in the books, uh, flyers, all that kind of stuff. We, we ha have like a whole document. Uh, it's like 20, 30 pages long. Like anytime I have an idea on Discord, I just type it into the ideas channel. I'll copy and paste it over and even more ideas are on the ideas documents. That way we ensure nothing's forgotten, nothing's left in the dust. So um, as far as that goes, that's where we stand. So, real quick, I think we've covered the majority of the topics regarding the plane building project. The plane and we building can, part. Yeah, we can right. probably pivot into the joint events between us and right. the semester. That's so, what I just brought up right now. Yes. Do you right. guys, real quick, before we go on to the subject. Do you have any like, guys, questions, anything, anything, anything that you guys want to bring up? Yes, yeah. questions, comments, concerns, anything uh, regarding the plane building. Talk to you guys. Okay, after. Okay. Okay, what was your question? Uh, I was just curious. I know student government likes funding things that bring back. Have you looked into competitions? Plane building wise, or anything that could have like award money or recognition. Uh, uh, recognition, idea. yes, but I don't know about plane building competitions. But there is no mm -hmm. doubt that like it's not even a question. Just by doing this project, right? Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, can have good press unless we crash. But we'll have good press. <laughs> <laughs> not to find a way to show them the exact <laughs> money chart how they're gonna get. Also, have their money back. Also, part of selling the plane after we've been using it for enough time to show them how much money they can get back from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's another goal. So make this like a continuous thing. Because if like we build a plane once and then 10 years later, hey, you guys remember that one time we got to build a plane? <laughs> like, yeah, we want to make it a continual thing mm -hmm. yeah. that people can actually take part in and benefit it. So good question. Um, is there anything else that I can answer in regards to that? No, that was just an idea for it. Right, awesome. that's okay. a good idea, great. Awesome, anything else from anybody? Um, okay. Quick thing, can you guys hear me? Yes. Right here. Cool. Um, so the idea is we will start off with a combustion engine plane for this project. Mm-hmm. Till now we uh, think so. Sorry? Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, that's all. Okay, sweet. All right, so that kind of touched on what you were asking earlier. Combustion engine versus electric. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. So I feel like that wraps up the topic about plane building. If you want to talk about it later, no worries. I think you still got to talk to me after it, it's fine. But we're gonna go ahead and shift to the next topic, which is 
this semester. So it's great right. to talk about a couple of semesters, a couple of years down the road. We will start but doing stuff this semester yes, for the plane building project. We want to start an initiative, maybe putting a couple deadlines just to start off with yeah, the outreach work. part, mm -hmm. right? I think that'll be a good idea. But we're going to start moving into the area of what we actually can do other than that throughout your guys' club and our club. And Matias, if you want to bring up on your computer, I know we have like the official list of all the events we have this semester. That yeah. way, maybe we can collab with that. Ah, okay. sure. Right now, I just have uh, the list of ideas, and also this is what we had, Renji. Cool. So, I'm going to throw out a lot of ideas on you guys. Let me know your opinion if you think, oh, this is a good idea. Maybe we can maybe change it up a little bit. What we can do with them if you have more ideas, or if you think it's a bad idea. First one is guest speaker series. We bring maybe a professor, somebody professional in the field, like... For, for instance, you know, somebody from NASA to come and talk to the students to bring like just a presentation of who they are, how do they get in their field, right? You've probably seen that in many other clubs across campus. I think that's a great way to kind of bring, you know, getting more kids involved throughout the club. Next one is field trips. Matthias actually wanted to take us to uh, Kennedy Space Center. He really wants to take us there. That's going to be a little bit hard. I know it costs yeah. money to get in there. Have been there. Right. Yeah, and then there's also like those forms you gotta do as an officer, yeah. right? Like safe forms, forms and all those things. And we have to talk with a professor to give us a form that to get you guys like out of classes so you can get it not absent. So we, we can do that too, so you're not gonna miss your classes. We were talking about engineering workshops, which we just have oh, kind of close to the, uh, the speaker series. We just have somebody from an engineering field to come and talk maybe on a specific thing, like how to work with, um, do you guys ever hear of Verilog? Okay, so that's a software. So how to work with that software, maybe PCB design, maybe different things like, do you have any ideas of softwares? I or mean, things aside that you can from learn? things like SolidWorks, no. Not oh, so now, yeah, like SolidWorks. software-wise, uh, like top of mind, it's kind of obvious, like a, like a professional engineering grade, like fluid dynamic simulator, wind tunnel Yeah, simulator. so you're like probably thinking of the aerospace ones, right? Yeah, so that's great, aerospace especially aerospace for this thing. club. Yes. What I what popped up into my head is all the electrical engineering ones, because I'm in electrical engineering, mm -hmm. but obviously there has to be a lot of certifications that you guys can get online that have to do with aerospace or mechanical engineering, and that is what you guys are in. Next is networking events. We can bring a lot of companies, not only throughout Orlando, or may, I don't know if we could, we could do it physically, I think it would be better than a Zoom call, obviously, like yeah, a physical actually networking event with companies that students, you know, walk around, talk with um, people that can give you jobs, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. And we bring those companies over here, they look for interns, and I think that would be a great thing that I see, like the career fair. We could even, yeah, turn that into a bigger thing. We yes. could maybe have an RSO of, like, all of the different engineering clubs coming together as, like, a big thing, so it's not yeah. just us. Yeah, and, and that wouldn't be bad for us either. Like, yeah. I like your idea, because mm -hmm. if it's more like a career, if it's like an... It doesn't have to be strictly aerial. More like, people will show up. Yeah, and it's like presented right, by right. NGE and Pegasus. Exactly. Pilots, which makes us look good, so it kind of yeah. has a lot of benefits if you try to do it the right way. Right, right exactly. I guess I can give you an example. Right now, I'm the Vice President External Committee for Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. We're having in the spring semester a joint thing with this club called Alpha and Us, a their networking event, like a golf networking event that we're bringing a lot of different companies. Half of them that that other club has connections with, and half of them that we have connections with. So we just have you know more companies for the students to network with, right? We have study groups, just you know, so little socials over there. If we have every night or like on final season, we can see like you know come and study together in this room because we already have it reserved. Get a little bit of snacks for people to come. We have resume building interviews or workshops. We have to build maybe somebody that's actually you know maybe a senior or a junior that has a lot of experience with that. Uh, I don't know if any like faculty or staff that actually have more experience with that, they might also want to come out if we can outreach to them, talk to students of how to build, you know, your resume, especially because I think most of the people in the club are freshmen, right? How to build your resume up, your CV, you know, all those kind of things, maybe how to, how to be in an interview. And then we have industry tours that has to do kind of like with the field trip things, going out, going to see different places, especially with all the aerospace fields that we have here in yep. Orlando, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another cool one is mentorship program. Right now, most of the people in the club are freshmen, but as soon as they start getting, you know, higher, like seniors, juniors inside of the club that have a little bit more experience, especially in the major that you guys are all in, we can have them and come and mentor them because I know they, they also like doing that. Every single other club that I know has that. IEEE has that. Shep has that. Right? I'm pretty sure KXR, no, actually, I don't know if KXR has that. But I, I know a, a lot of all the other clubs that have the mentorship program, which I really think can bring on a lot of other students to the club. And then we have engineering competitions. 
which is like, did you guys ever hear of like NASA student launch? Mm -hmm. We have yes. EPA, so have right? EPA, P3, we have like, this is a list here. This is the AIA design build fly competition. There's so much different competitions that we can participate in. Like have a little, you know, sector in the club that, that they do that competition. Maybe they can, you know, they can win. And I don't know if there's like financial um, awards for winning, but there's that. And I can send you the list of all the kind of competitions we have later. Excellent. Thank you. And other Is than this, that. Um, Word document available anywhere? Yeah, I'll send it to you guys. If you want, I'll send it to the general chat of uh, I will. Avian Year Club. Okay, yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. And those, so that's the list of competitions. That was the last thing on media. Now I want to kind of open up to up you guys, maybe you, if you have any ideas of different things that you can take initiatives for the clubs. Also, think to make something joint between Next Gen Engineering and, uh, and your guys' club, right? That we can maybe do together, maybe like a yeah. general body meeting or or a workshop that we do, NGE, your club, you know, yeah. X, and we bring everyone together for some, one of these things. Yeah. What are you guys thinking? You guys go first, go ahead. I'm thinking what we could do is um, specifically to get new people, like freshmen and whatever, on board, um, we can advertise like kickback nights or just like fun yeah. events, not necessarily related to engineering. That's what we were talking about, like, like a joint mm -hmm. social. Weren't we talking about that last time? A yeah, yeah. Social. yeah. Like some like of the just to meet everyone, just, just bring like food and let's be people there. Things like that. Yeah. Great, yeah, great. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm gonna put that on. Yeah, and that's actually one of the things I, I would say after talking about plane building. That was like the second <laughs> uh, most concern I had was like if we can do something not too far in the future mm -hmm. to kind of get things rolling, like a, right. like a joint yeah. social. Because um, we were talking last time about doing a back to school social. Yeah. I don't know how quickly that could be. Yeah. Arranged, but we can at least still start and get something right. of this work going. Um, so real quick, while we're on the, uh, the subject of it, what, what do you guys uh, plan to do in regards to that? I know you were talking about partial proceeds, which is where you go to like a restaurant. Right, that's one of the things that you could do. You just bring them in for the restaurant to kind of get a little bit more funding for your club. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. um, so any other ideas? This is a bit further in the semester, but there is there is an F twenty two air show in the Sanford Airport. Cool. Yeah, I think. So isn't that in October though? Uh, I think there's one in April. April. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Twenty first, twenty second weekend. Yeah, that. So we got the right people in the room. Like that. <laughs> okay. When is <laughs> Sun and Fun? Is this uh, Sun and April, fun March, April? somewhere yeah. around that number. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. April and March. Oh, I definitely want to do Sun and Fun. Oh, yeah. That's where like it's that's like the second biggest in the country. It's like the name everyone knows of, and. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of aerospace and aviation things are like it's like a black hole in space. Like this is sun and fun, and everything else around is bent <laughs> to the will. Like I'll give you an example. I was looking at doing what's uh, it's called the light sport repairman. So like my my end goal is to like get my full on A and P to be an aircraft mechanic. Uh, which you can go to school for that or get a job for that. But the other thing you can do is get your light sport repairman. It's like you work on light sport planes, and basic basic stuff, and you just sign off, and then you can actually do some maintenance stuff. And they have a two-day course somewhere in Florida, not too far. And then I was like, hey, how come it's on this day, not that day? Oh, yeah, well, sudden fun's happening. So no one's going to be here mm -hmm. if we have it on that day. So I was like, oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. So sudden fun is a major one because everything bends to the will of sudden fun. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's not terribly far. Mm -hmm. And there's so many central, central things at sudden fun, so many connections there. And I think that would be, like, the, a great first major because it's a it's a huge huge event oh, yeah. almost a week long like five days i think something like mm -hmm. that so it's, it's a very very big event and for you guys too i mean i'm sure right. if y'all want to tag along we'll make yep. something happen for it um right. do you off the top of your head how mm -hmm. would that work because you know as an rso you know more than we do about how this works taking trips and, yeah all that stuff so first of all if you want to be like how do you say when you you're not like missing for your class that you get um like a pre-authorized absence form yeah like an like something. an absence form so you get that you need a professor to sign on and like okay. a certain reason so we can do that probably pretty easily okay and other than that you just have to get funding for transportation or you could just do the way of everybody just drives there yeah. mm -hmm. you have to if it costs money to get into whatever you were talking about then i guess mostly most times the students have to pay or if we actually have a lot of funding we can go to student government and ask them most chances if we just tell them yeah we're trying to go to you know this air show they're gonna be like no we can't just give you money to pay for all the students who want to go to an air show because it's unfair for everybody else yeah. right but yeah 
Um, so the students sometimes have to pay, even, but okay. some of the big clubs have enough funding for that in like, they're saying, oh, that's one of our things that we're doing this semester, that's part of it, so they already put their funding towards that. Okay. All right, well, across the division, we get there were yeah. scenarios people pay. It's yeah. like, yeah. Well, we'll work out a solution. It was, when I went, it was like 50 bucks at most, I think, and that, oh, I, I for was a person. Like, uh, no, in total, because I paid for parking. I was driving oh, okay. two of my buddies, and like, I mm -hmm. paid for parking, we took my car. It's not like it's a crazy number, especially yeah. in aviation. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Um, so, yeah, we talked about the air show stuff. Uh, what do you, okay, what do you, mm -hmm. uh, what do you realistically think our first joint event is going to be? Because we're throwing a lot of stuff on the wall. Right. What do you think the first thing we're going to be able to realistically do in the, in the spring right. semester? What do you think it's going to be? So what I wanted to do, first of all, is by the end of this meeting, we should have a deadline yeah. because if we're gonna keep on going to the next meeting, like not have a deadline, not exactly going over, there's, there's no reason for this for this meeting, right? We have mm -hmm. to have a deadline um, for a thing that we're doing, and if we have a deadline, we're just gonna work towards it. What I was thinking is maybe like a general body meeting together. So I don't know. Have you thought of making a general body meeting for Pegasus pilots yeah. like on a consistent basis, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So that's what I was gonna talk about um, in general for. For Pegasus pilots. Yeah. I wanted to kind of talk about our progression plan, if that's the right way to put it. So, clubs in general, RSOs, they have their GBMs, and we're going to be in a, it depends on a lot of things. Number mm -hmm. one, if we have, I hope not, but let's say we have like 10 people show up to every single meeting. Well, we can't exactly have a GBM, and then it's like mm -hmm. split. So, it, it depends a lot on where we actually go in terms of growth. Regardless, though, I can say this with guarantee. Mm -hmm. In the spring semester, we need to at least have consistency. There's no point in bringing ourselves out and doing like five meetings a month with all these different people. We're going to start with just GBMs for a little bit. We're mm -hmm. going to kind of put everybody on the same page with an intro. It's all right, here's aviation. Oh, you know this? I don't care. Shut up. Here's aviation. You know, we're going to just mm -hmm. kind of put everyone on the same page. And that's a part of that. When we have people in like their specific niches, like in engineering, yes. we start bringing them into the groups, All right. and then go from yeah. there. And I don't, I don't want it to be. Uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't, I don't want it to just be Andrews talking every single night, giving you death by PowerPoint. Uh, you know, I want people who, oh, I know the subject. I can, I can talk about it for a bit, even if they're scared or uncomfortable. I want them. This is the place to right. go. This is the place to make that happen. So. Push you out there and make it happen. As part of the general body meetings and moving into those separate groups, maybe we can start research projects. I know KXR are right, start building. Exactly. They do like That's, a week or two of just yeah. research, seeing mm -hmm. what would work well for a plane, what kind of design, things like yeah. that. That that is that is our long-term goal that is, if not in the spring semester, mm -hmm. most assuredly in like, if we do, do RSOs meet in the summer? No, I don't even know how that works. There's a UNER, like an overall it's actually a club, it's an RSO that everybody can meet up and talk, like communicate through the RSOs, but overall that it just, you communicate with your senator and student government. Okay, okay, but what I, okay, cool, thank you. So what I'm getting at is, okay, if not the spring semester, at least in the fall semester and beyond, we're gonna get to that point with the momentum that we right. currently have and all that, that we can have multiple different groups. And off the top of my head, there was like the committee for like accident review, like you, you know, spend a week or two mm -hmm. reviewing an accident. Mm -hmm. It's like maybe five, six people to a group in the GBM. You give us a 10, 15, 20 minute presentation on what you reviewed. You're gonna go in depth and, and kind of give us the, the meat of it. Give us everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> so off the top of my head, that was, that was one idea. And, and there's a handful of them. So most certainly we're gonna adopt that structure that other RSOs have. Okay, there's a GBM. You go to it, and then if you're in the uh, crash committee, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. you meet on whatever day you meet, something yeah. like that. Right, so I was thinking for you guys, because we already have our events that we're going to you know, publicize when we do our general body meeting. We have like BMES, we have the FSI Rover project that you guys should definitely come to. We have um, an, actually our own iron propulsion that we're in the middle okay. of the building. So we're going to publish with those things. And I think for you guys, you should maybe throw out um, kind of like a starting project for students in your group to take initiative. Yeah. Saying like, if you guys have an idea for a project in the club, message me, maybe do a little Google Forms, you know, what their idea is, and then they come to you, if you think that's a good idea, or whatever the board thinks, then be like, yeah, sure, let's actually take that into initiative, right? Then you guys, that student can be the one leading that project, or that, you know, the sub-project in the team, and you can start advertising that in our general body meeting. So what I wanted to do is, do you remember when the general body meeting for NG is? 24? The 24th. I think so, so last semester we had a general body meeting combined with SASE, which is another pretty big club on campus, and it went actually really well in my opinion. It was like a Halloween general body meeting. 
And so we can have our own general body meetings that both of us just come, all the NGN members and your guys members, you guys talk about the projects and everything that you're going through. We can also obviously talk about the plane that we're building because that's one of the big projects that both of us are working on. And then, and then after you guys finish with your projects, we're just going to publicize exactly what NG is doing, right? Just to get everyone a little bit more involved throughout the club so everyone knows exactly what's going to be happening. Okay, excellent. And just for like networking, you know, so everybody can meet each other, stuff like that. Yeah, and, and I'm certain that like, like, well, it's going to be a long-term partnership because you guys helped us out. We're not going to forget it. So it'll be a long-term partnership with us and NGE with whatever we do in the future. And in general, there's a lot of grand ideas, like, like far out ideas. Like mm -hmm. one thing I was thinking of, like, uh, something that we can do with like the health majors because right. you know, with like the life flight operations it's, it's a completely different world. I was watching a video that uh, first responders and paramedics have to watch like mm -hmm. like because they, they treat helicopters like it's a foreign thing like this is the tail rotor <laughs> you don't go near this and, and they make it a foreign thing so uh, and for us you know likewise their profession is a foreign thing so putting that together and if like something grand like landing a life flight helicopter on the memory mall or whatever and like it just comes down and we have like we can totally do it it's going to be something long term in the future mm -hmm. but joint ideas joint projects is a, is a huge huge thing we're going to try to focus on right definitely long term also incredibly long term yes. but i'm thinking mm -hmm. maybe as like part of the club in general since we're branching off to different categories maybe like drones or whatnot maybe aside from planes we could start doing copters things like that absolutely oh. you know? i want to teach helicopters for yeah. flight sim with it's so cool like it's a totally yeah. different world that could like be a uh, what's cool. it called the speaker series the what the, like a speaker series yeah you just come and teach about it yeah if you guys have knowledge you can do that also, actually, no, that's close. I was going to bring you guys. There's a leadership week having in like three weeks that you can have like your own presentation that you can come and say, but that's what really close. What is it about? Leadership? It's called leadership week. It's going to be a whole week. Every single room in student union, basically, is going to have like different programs happening in it. Like not only students, but faculty and staff are going to come and have their own presentations talking about yeah. anything, and you can just sign up to them. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll Thank you. Other than that, I think we should do. Are you guys open maybe on the 24th to do a joint general body meeting? Uh, January? Uh, let's yeah. See. I mean, I'll see why not. Um, I gotta make sure that, yeah, I think we should be okay because next week on the 18th, it is the 18th, I'll check the date, it's the 18th, that's when we're gonna be in the OSI, the Office of Student Involvement in the Student Union, to do our whole. Hey, we're applying. How does this thing work? And then, if you're answering our questions, we do that. That's our consultation appointment. After that, I am 99% sure we can make it. What is the time for your meeting on the 24th? Do you remember what it is, Matthias? Let me try to open it. Right, let's go. I think it's from 5. No, 6. Maybe from 5 to 6. Maybe. That's fine. Okay. We'll, we'll work through that and we'll make sure that uh, we can get things running and get people to show up. Um, the next thing I kind of wanted to go over, I feel like as far as the meeting, like where we are right now today, I'm 99% I'm sure we have covered the majority of how, how has Pegasus Pilots been progressing since we've all been together. This is our first time together since the break. So we're all caught up on to where we are right now. Uh, we talked about short and long term future goals for us. What are some, we talked about deadlines and you know, I'm glad you mentioned it. I would have totally forgotten our point. Setting deadlines. Uh, what are some deadlines that everyone pitch in? What do you think we can do deadline-wise? It could be something like... Yeah, we have to start building deadlines. Yeah. Um, I know you're talking about uh, your club specifically, but I'm thinking we but should have specific us, yeah. deadlines, right? Mm -hmm. So we can start working on it. Like you guys can say, oh, let's start a, a speaker series or let's bring a professor to talk. So give a date, be like February 12th, boom, 5 p.m. And that's great. There's no problem with just throwing out a date like that. You create a poster, obviously, after you reach out to the professor and mm -hmm. you just start doing that. If you have that deadline, you can delegate it to different people on your team to start working on it, and it's gonna happen. Most of these things don't require too much effort to work on. I would say before the general body meeting, we can have like news reports from the past month or something, just yeah. general. I, I'm, I'm doing something for Discord. Uh, there's already the Aviation News Discord thing. Mm -hmm. um, I had like a bunch of ideas written down that for the purpose of brevity, I, I, I chose not to address for our meeting today, but one of those is something of the sort. I even thought, you know, so you know, there's like your night's email. I was wondering if Pegasus Pilots could have something specifically for that. So if you're a member of Pegasus Pilots, 
you get a nice email aviation thing that gets tossed out there and we can we can do a lot of stuff yeah. with that we, we can do so much for that and there's a lot of ideas for recruitment you know you, you see those organizations and those clubs that have their tables mm -hmm. set up here and there I mean once we get ourselves to having like a flight simulator and we can portably move it it's like a no-brainer like what are yeah. those guys doing and you know they want to go on the sim you know uh -huh. we could partner with ours to see on that because they have flights mm -hmm. and are they, they are they gonna allow us to do it because I was actually in there and the gentleman mentioned to me and I was talking to can we do that I can check I mean, I'll let you know next week. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So yeah, because that, that's an idea. And then in general, uh, from when we last did our EGS call of interest presentation back in November, uh, a gentleman came up to us and said, hey, I'm not using this no more. Y'all can have it. And then we're going to somehow get his flight sim. Uh, so we have one, at least so far. But um, we're going to kind of work things through and, and see how it goes. If yeah. I can get access, it probably would be kind of limited since it is you know, government property yeah. and whatever. So. But actually, some access is better than no access. Yeah. So we're going to take that. Um, Nadal, this question is more directed towards you. Yeah. Flight sims are not cheap. How lenient is SGA going to be with funding for all those things? All right. So pretty soon I'm going to join the financials committee in the Senate. Okay. And I'm going to give you guys the exact like path to get not only funded by student government, but how rare it is, how much money we have. We have a lot of money to go away. But it's not as easy as you think to just throw it out in clubs, right? We're like student government. You, we can't just give you the money and you do whatever you want with it. If yeah. you say we need this kit, we need that, we order it for you, and and you just get the kit. And then everything has to be extremely documented. Right. And there's specific ways to do. Like you guys are like, I didn't know that there was such a thing called net thirty institution. Mm -hmm. Like that's where like the payment goes out thirty days after the event or something. And that can possibly be a conflict with. Right. Like, oh, we can't do this with this company because they're not going to. So there's little things like that well, mm -hmm. we got to like iron out and, and get clarification. Yeah, sure, I'm going to give a lot of good words in the center for you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Moses, can you hear us? Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Great. Moses? <laughs> Welcome. Do you have anything Thanks. to say? So we basically we went over the whole the whole plane. We went over what we did last time, basically, and what we talked about. Yeah. We were thinking we narrowed it down that we want to probably get a kit. We think that's the easiest way. How we're going to have to make a reach out committee to find exactly where to store the plane, how to get the uh, tools to manufacture the plane, and all the cost funding for that. We need a whole committee just to reach out to people to ask for sponsorships and to think exactly how to get the funding from student government. So that's I, the plane I, part. I think that's that's really good. Sounds sounds very structured. I like it. Okay, great. And then we went over a couple of the events that, that we're having at NGA this semester. And we were thinking of maybe having a joint general body meeting on the 24th with them. It's the 26th. 26th on the 26th. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, okay. cool. Um, so what do we need to do uh, as pilots? Mm -hmm. What do we got? I mean, I know you have a presentation, make the PowerPoint. Yeah, okay. All so that's what I was just going to say. So make the presentation, obviously, you have PowerPoints, have enough projects that you can say, oh, you guys should come to this, we're starting this. This is why you should maybe join the club for new members that are coming. And then we can have just a social, like a networking event, just like we had with SASC, remember Moses? That we just have like, yeah. like yeah. icebreakers for people to start getting to know each other, because it is the first general body meeting, not only between our clubs, but I think your club, is that the first? That will be our first official meeting. Official. We, we had a, a meeting oh, with uh, like 30 people mm -hmm. in like uh, the business building, okay. and that was coordinated through Ms. Sullivan, through the building manager, oh, so cool. we had a meeting, but yeah. not an official. That was more so, hey, here we are, let's talk more in depth for now. We're going to say something. Speaking of like those deadlines, what day will we become official? Um, so once we submit our RSO packet, here's how I understand how the process works. On the 18th, 17th, whatever it is the next week, that day is just for us to sit down, as I understand, with SGA. They're going to say, all right, do you guys have any questions? And they kind of walk us through the little details to make sure everything's ironed out. After that's all good, the approximate wait time at most for us to be approved is two weeks. So at the latest, we're looking, and this is being extra, 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 extra conservative, middle of February, to being officially approved. Now, that's interesting. Once you're approved, you just, it's like a switch. You're on, you're, you're good, you can get Oh, moved. Moses, what did you want to say, Moses? Did you want to say something? He's gone. <laughs> he died. Rest in peace, Moses. Oh, I just don't have Wi Fi, that's why. Oh, okay. So I was with the library. Okay, keep on talking. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. I just yeah, thought he, um, he knew how to like create an RSO because he obviously created one by himself. Yeah, yeah. He's well, yeah. Um, as far as the, the, the deadline to go back to that question, yeah, I mean, two weeks 
two weeks past once we submit everything, so that's why my estimation is middle of February at the latest to be extra, extra conservative and safe. So given that I said that, we, we can use that as a basis of, okay, if, if we say that middle of February is our expected, our anticipated latest deadline of becoming official, we can at least base everything else for the spring semester based on that deadline. If we base things off that deadline and we get approved earlier, we'll be ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we're still on schedule. So that's that's mm -hmm. my thought process. I haven't verbally said it out loud, that's the thought process. That's how we can go with things, with planning, with deadlines, and everything. Um, so yeah, uh, the, I had some other small questions I'll, I'll like ask. I'll just ask you one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. just like minor, like how do you guys manage Microsoft Forms? Oh, okay. Or some boring stuff that no one wants to hear. Um, I'll go through that at the end. But yeah, so we talked about that stuff. Um, we're going to have a joint GBM.